Okay, so this is a, the, the next talk is going to be by Chris. Yep. Who's going Hi. to try to scare us with uh, programming <laughs> and reasoning. Uh, they're, a, they're a lot less scary than they sound, I promise. Um, yeah, quite, quite basic, actually. So, yeah, hi, really glad to be here. So, uh, this talk is going to cover mine and Venanzio Capretta's work on monadic streams. So, these are co-inductive data structures that generalize other useful co-inductive types, such as lists, streams, and trees. Um, and we show how common operations on these types can be generalized by using monads and applicative functors. Uh, and using this idea, we've developed a Haskell library called Monster, uh, which presents many examples of these uh, generalized operations. Um, wow, okay, oh, there we go. <laughs> so, right, first question, what's a monadic stream, or a, a monster for short? So, uh, a stream is uh, just a sequence of pure elements that goes on forever. So, here's a stream of natural numbers. Uh, a monadic stream, or monster for short, is a stream where traversing to the next element evaluates some kind of effect. Uh, this effect might modify the element that you get back. It could give you no element, different elements, or multiple elements, depending on what the effect is and how it's evaluated. Um, and we model these effects with monads, uh, basically. So uh, before looking at some examples, I first want to define monsters formally. Uh, so this, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, this is the uh, data type of monadic streams, uh, and you can see it uh, takes a functor m as a parameter and a set a. Um, so we <coughs> refer to this element here as the head, and then the nested monadic stream as its tail. Um, so as I said on the previous slide, we think of each element of the stream as being guarded by an effect of some kind. It's useful to use monads to model these effects. Uh, because they give a notion of sequencing multiple effects, which allows you to step down the screen. Um, but we relax this notion of effect a bit, um, and we broaden our definition to any functor. Um, so we only consider where m is a container functor, um, because this guarantees that the co-inductive type of m monsters is well defined. You might notice this is defined in terms of a constructor, but yeah, really it should be a, um, a destructor. Uh, uh, but, but in Haskell, they coincide, so it doesn't matter for our uses. Um, so categorically, we can only prove properties about monadic streams if the underlying functor has final co-algebras and container functors satisfy this property. So throughout the talk, I will refer to M here as either the underlying functor or underlying monad. Um, and I'll also refer to these operations, the monad operations, as uh, return and join respectively in the using the functional programming kind of nomenclature here. <coughs> right. uh, so first example are maybe monsters. Uh, so by instantiating our type of monadic streams with the maybe monad, we get the type of maybe monsters. And by expanding a particular uh, element, so uh, maybe monsters of natural numbers, we can see that they're isomorphic to that of lists. And because uh, monadic streams are a co-inductive data type, you, you get co-lists rather than rather than lists. And another example are reader monsters. So uh, the effect of the underlying monad here is reading from a shared environment. Uh, so the resulting monster needs to read from some environment at every step along the stream. And this effectively gives you a, a kind of state machine, um, in a sense, uh, where the, 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 in, well, the current state of the monster uh, or the state machine is the function at the head of the stream. Um, and the state space is functions from uh, E to A. So if you restrict yourself to a subset of these, then you get effectively finite state machines. So why is this interesting? Uh, different kinds of co-inductive data structures, as we've seen, are represented by instantiations of monsters with different monads. Uh, the maybe monad gives us lazy lists, the reader monad gives us state machines, list monad gives us trees, and the IO monad in Haskell gives us interactive processes and so on. So we thought we should try to define functions on monsters that are polymorphic in the monad <coughs> that instantiate to operations on each of these different data types. Uh, so with this in mind, we developed a library of generalized operations on monadic streams called monster. <coughs> So many of these are just liftings of common operations on lists and streams, zips, scans, filtering, um, and uh, 
most of these are inspired by those already in the Haskell standard library, uh, specifically from data.list. Uh, so corresponses, sorry, correspondences between instances of monsters and other data structures have inspired more context-specific functions that we expand on in the examples part of the, uh, of the library. And we intend to focus on this in future, in future work. Um, and we also, as I've sort of alluded to, we, we relax the idea of the underlying functor being a monad and think about operations where the functor has a different extra structure, uh, like applicative, traversable, etc. So just going to go through one example from our library. Uh, so scan, you might have seen before, is just a function that takes a binary operator and some initial accumulator value and then scans it along the list, uh, building up a list of intermediate accumulated values. Um, so I'm going to show two contexts in which the generalized version of this function is useful. Uh, so the first one is the example on this slide using a reader monster, which, um, as I said, corresponds to uh, state machines of some kind, sort of infinite state machines. So edge detector here is a monster that uh, when you run it, like you would run a state machine with a set of inputs, uh, tells you whether an edge has appeared in this list of Boolean values. Um, and you can use scan uh, to essentially scan along this monster. So the key thing is here is that scan isn't operating on the list that gets returned. It's operating on the monster itself, returning a new monster, a new state machine. That instead does a running total of the edges detected. Um, so uh, another use case uh, is probability trees. So probability trees, again, you can represent with a kind of monster, um, so I'll talk about that on the next slide. Um, prob tree is a variable which uh, which it's a monster that represents our first first probability tree, uh, and it re represents the probabilities of picking different colour balls out of this bag, uh, where each level is the probability of taking a ball out after n choices. Um, so the goal here is to find an operation that calculates the second tree, which is the tree of sequential probabilities, i.e. the probability of the nth ball be being picked, but given all of the prior probabilities. Um, and as you can probably guess, we can just do this with uh, scan again. So, um, and this is because our branch label trees, uh, sp specifically branch labeled, annoyingly, um, not just regular trees, uh, are a type of monadic stream instantiated with the list monad. Um, so we can scan this probability tree with multiplication and then if we index at the same level uh, using this generalized indexing operator you can see that this is what we get so yeah minimal structure so Depending on the function, we require different structure on the underlying functor. So, so far, we've just been considering uh, the structure of a monad on the underlying functor. But it's interesting to try and find the minimal structure required for a particular function. So zipping turns a pair of monsters into a monster of pairs. But you don't actually need a monad to do this. Uh, you can just use an applicative functor. Uh, tail, you require the functor to be a monad. Uh, scan with the starting element that we used for um, state machines, uh, you only need the functor to be an applicative. Uh, but the ver variant of scan that we used for probability trees, uh, the functor must be a monad. Um, so finding the minimal extra structure required for a particular function could give a characterization of co-inductive types that support that operation. But that's modulo us finding out what co-inductive types monadic streams uh, characterize exactly. Um, so this notion can separate operations on this set of co-inductive uh, data types that monadic streams represent into different classes based on the extra structure required of the underlying functor. So uh, the key results of our work, uh, the main result is our Haskell library monster uh, for working with these data structures. 
uh, included in the library are developed examples of different types of monadic streams, uh, and it provides a basic environment to explore their potential uses. Uh, we've also formalized two proofs in Agda uh, using the Agda categories library uh, developed by Jacques Corret and, and others. Uh, so the, the first formalization is a slight generalization of a theorem from uh, Varno, Varno Vene's PhD thesis, uh, where we just ignore this star. Um, but we, we, relax, uh, we relax one of the categories in the uh, domain of the bifunctor. Uh, and the second formalization is one of a, a generalization of the statement that monadic streams are monoidal functors or Cartesian monoidal functors when the underlying functor also is. Yeah, and interestingly, it requires this uh, full middle interchange rule. So, some other insights that we got from our work. Uh, it's not the case that monadic streams are monads if the underlying functor is just any arbitrary monad. Um, we found that it does work if the underlying functor is a representable monad, um, but we're not exactly sure uh, what, what structure is necessary and sufficient for this property. Um, if the underlying functor is a co-monad, then the corresponding monadic stream is also a co-monad. Um, and yeah, on a practical note, we'd like to look further into how monadic streams relate to functional reactive programming. Uh, where monsters can be used to represent streams of effectful inputs to a, a reactive program. So I, I think uh, uh, Ivan Perez um, and others have done work similar to this uh, with a Haskell library called Dunai. Uh, right. Yeah, so if you're interested in the library, you can check it out at this GitHub link. Um, and we're going to put it on Hackage eventually once we're happy with how how polished it is. So yeah, thank you for listening and thanks to the organizers. Thank you. Yeah. We don't have much time, but uh, still Sorry. one or two questions. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, could you maybe go like one slide back yes. uh, in there? Yeah, so you say it's on the case that monadic streams are monads if the underlying functor is an arbitrary monad, but this result holds when you work with co-monads. Is what oh, you were uh, right below. Pardon, pardon me, do you mind repeating that? So you say there it is not the case that monadic streams are monad mm -hmm. if the underlying uh, functor is a monad, mm -hmm. but it does hold if you consider co-monads. Uh, y yes, sorry, so I, I might have worded that badly. So if, if the underlying functor is a co-monad, then the corresponding monadic stream is a co-monad, uh, if, if you see what I mean. So, um, yeah, it just, I mean, uh, I just wondering why it, it holds if you consider uh, for the underlying functor to be a co-monad, but, uh, but if it's a monad, it is not the case. Then oh. it's no longer, then it's a monadic stream no longer well, a monad. Uh, the, the the problem well with with the monad the problem comes in implementing the uh, the join operation so you find that if you have a monadic stream of monadic streams uh, when you try to collapse it down to a single monadic stream uh, you duplicate a lot of the effects so uh, we we've got a counter example for this uh, using the uh, the state monad um, for example so you find if you have a, a state monster uh, that trying to implement the join operation um, you, you essentially are, are only, you, you're not guaranteed for all the required laws to hold. Um, yeah, I, in the library we've, we've uh, put the counter example, so if you're interested, go look there. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. I think we're going to have to stop here. Yeah, so sorry about thank that. Thank you again. Thank you.